Hello, world. Welcome to an uh, episode of PonderCast. I am really excited to have my friend, my principal, Mr. Sean Henderson. Sean is a pro at podcasting. He was recently in an episode called Just a Kid from Haney Street with Dustin and Jacob on the South Bend On Purpose podcast. I will link that below because it's great. Him and I also believe like technology is a superpower and it can be used for good and it can be used for evil. So we're going to talk about how Twitter and social media is a great thing. I'll let Sean introduce himself. Well, thank you. Uh, my name is Sean Henderson. I'm in my second year as principal of Raleigh High School. I'm just enjoying it, man. Yeah, you're right. I did do that podcast. I am just a kid from Haney Street. <laughs> I'm a South Bend kid, born and raised, went to all South Bend schools, um, a product of South Bend schools, um, played basketball at Raleigh High School, went from there and played junior college basketball at one year at Lincoln Trail, the next year at Ancilla, or Ancilla and then Lincoln Trail, vice versa. And then I went down to Maryville College in Maryville, Tennessee. That's it, man. It's just, you know, I love basketball, love sports, love youth, um, love relationships. That's just me. <laughs> Yeah, and like he brought up being a product of South Bend schools. I'm a product of South Bend schools. He was he was a few years older than me and a few inches taller than me. So I wasn't the basketball player, but we'll still shoot it around sometimes. And one thing I love about Sean is he's got his high school basketball jersey in his office. So the kids see it. And it's just the pride of the South Side. So that's that's super cool. What's funny about that is that um so Mark Johnson, the former coach of Raleigh High School, sent me the jersey. The athletic director at Washington High School intercepted it. And so we this conversation had already taken place that I would come over to uh, Raleigh High School from Washington. And so he had this jersey framed and he gives it to me. And now at this point, I haven't had a conversation with anyone other than my wife that I'm coming to Raleigh High School. So we take this picture and she has Facebook. So she put it on Facebook and people just asking questions like, what does that mean? Like, why is he holding a Raleigh jersey? And did they retire his jersey? And it was just so neat how that all happened. But, yeah, that's how it happened, man. It's, and I love it. So I, I have no place to hang it up here. So I hung it up at the school, and I love it. All right. I want to start with some Q&A so that everybody listening can get to know you a little bit better. So my first question is, what's your favorite color? Blue and gold. <laughs> right on. All right. We got that. I think we all know this now. But what's your favorite sport, and who's your favorite team? You know what? Uh, my favorite sport is basketball. I don't have a favorite team. I just I just enjoy basketball. Now I'm probably gonna people's gonna probably stop watching this podcast when I say that I'm a LeBron fan. I am. I am. I like Bron Bron. So, um, but I don't. I just love sports. So I don't. I don't have a favorite team. Number three. What is your favorite class that you've taught? So I was a special education teacher. So um, I guess my favorite class was interpersonal relationships. Um, and it was just about walking kids through how to deal with certain issues. The classroom that I taught was a classroom that had all emotional, emotionally disabled students. So kids that just had a lot of issues emotionally and didn't know how to um, respond or deal with people or interact with people. And so I guess that was my favorite class because it was able to like just touch the core of some of their issues. It was so much fun. <laughs> it was so fun. Stories for decades. What's your favorite app? We do Duel. The family do Duel app and where we can able to see each other. My son transitioned to a iPhone, so that's the only way we can FaceTime. So I guess that is kind of the, the most the favorite app that I have. Now are you talking about which son? Because I know you've got a you've got a couple boys. Yeah. So my oldest, my oldest son Myron, he's in the Navy. Yeah. So he transitioned to an iPhone. We're Android family. He's not trying to have an Android. <laughs> So he went to an iPhone. So the only way for us to communicate where we can see him was to get a dual app where now we're able to see him and we're able to do the same thing with Marcus now that he has the phone as well. The last question before we start talking about social media is what is the best part about being principal of the school that you grew up in in your home neighborhood? Man, just the tradition. The fact that you are in a place that you once went to school, like just the community, the, I don't know, man. It's, it's like, you don't have words for it. It's exciting. Every day is new. Every day is exciting. Every day is, I walk in this building, I'm like, wow, like I'm a principal of the school I went to. Like, I don't think, I don't know, many people can't say that. It's breathtaking, man. I, I love it. <laughs> There's not a day that I don't, I'm not excited to go. And like one cool thing that 
you have is some of the people that you went to high school with, oh. you now work with, and then there might even be some that had you as a student. Yeah. Yeah. And, and their parents and so some of our students' parents. And so I guess that's the thing is that it's, it's kind of both ways that now if I have to call a parent about an issue or a concern, like they know who's calling them. It's not someone that they don't know. Like they know me, like this is, this is Sean. I grew up with him. I know his personality. I know, I know he cares. I know, you know, th those things are neat. And then to be working with colleagues that I grew up with. Oh man. Just amazing. Like, Jen Flugner and I, Mrs. Flugner and I were dance partners in Corlears. And so now we have an opportunity to build on this next generation together. That's just neat. Yeah. And like her kids go to the school and your kids <laughs> are going to go to school and my kids are going to go to school. So it's like a family atmosphere on the South side of South Bend. It is super fun. All right. Let's, let's start talking about uh, social media because okay. I believe that you have improved and you have changed the culture at Riley, just like one tweet at a time. So why did you start Twitter? I, I wanted to find a way to promote what's going on in our school. And I've always been the person that tried to stay away from social media. I just always felt like it was dangerous. And it's funny because when I was when I was teaching, I had a student. This is when MySpace was out. <laughs> so I, used to always, I had a student that used to always say, MySpace is the devil. And I'm like, what? Like, I never, but I never had it. And so I'm like, why do you keep saying that? And I think where he was getting at before we got there is just how dangerous social media can be. So I was always this person with no with social media. I'm not touching it. And then when I came over to Riley and um, I felt like it was just really important to start promoting what is going on right in our school. There's always so many negatives that people talk about. There's always so much. Um, um, if an issue happened, that blows up. But we never look at the positive things that's going on. We don't look at the uh, 900 students that we that we served last year at the end of the year because they had a, over a certain GPA and a certain attendance percentage. You know, out of mm -hmm. 1,200 students, nine that's huge. And so I just wanted to find a way to get that information out, and then also for our students to see it, and for that next generation to see it. And so social media has now become something huge for me. That's the reason why I want the world to see what's going on at, at South Bend Riley High School, whether if it's athletics, academics whatever clubs. I just want people to know. And you're doing a good job of it. And and sometimes I'll see tw tweets come out in the wee hours of the morning. And I don't know if you know how to schedule them or if you are really up at those times. Yeah, I'm up at those times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up and down all the time. So that yeah, that's what happens. You kind of mentioned what you love about Twitter. Students are on there. But why do you think educators should be on uh, Twitter? It's a way for us to network across the world. Some of the issues that we may have in our building, it's not just in our building, it's, it's across the nation. And I think, and as I'm seeing, and I'm, I'm starting to link up with more educators, I'm seeing that they're, they're also having those issues and they're given tools on how, to, on how to deal with those issues. And so I think that's important for us as educators to always use that as a tool, as an opportunity to grow, as an opportunity to look and see what someone else is doing to learn. Um, there's a lot of principles on there. That is huge. And one thing that I just recently seen that I fell in love with was this Twitter site it's called Principles as Dads. That hit me hard because there's a balance that you got to have. And when you don't have that balance, um, you, 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 you lose stuff at home. And so and that's where divorce come from. That's where kids start. Re your own kids start resenting you and they're, they're upset with you. And. I've always been that person to try to protect home and not let the kids be all on there. But when I saw that, I said, it makes sense. So maybe that's something that we need to start doing. But it's just so much to see. You know, I see your podcast on there. Um, I just see all these different neat ideas that can happen from being on Twitter. And just likewise, I use Twitter as almost professional development, but like on my own time. So not that I, I love your professional developments and your meetings. <laughs> They're great. They're great. <laughs> but, you know, um, when I'm sitting at home at, you know, nine o'clock on a slow evening and I can just like flip through Twitter and see some teachers doing some great things. Yeah. You're right. It's just uh, it's just a good way to network. Another thing I love about your Twitter is you use the same hashtag in a lot of things, man. Where did this hashtag proud principle come from? So my buddy Byron Sanders and I, who was the principal of Gemtown, we were at Washington together. And I was trying to introduce him to Twitter. And I said, hey, man, we need to start putting this hashtag 
proud principal in there. And so that's where it came from because it's it, it's letting our students know that we're, we're we're proud of them, like, and it's not just like we're so supportive of what they're doing. Like, I, I don't I don't care if we lose a basketball game. I'm I'm still proud of you. I'm proud of the fact that you got out there and you played your heart out, that you represented your school to the best. And so that's where that hashtag proud principal came from. And I just continued on with it. And I am. I'm just I'm happy with everything that they do. It's just amazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've got a busy football program and yeah. basketball program and sports and swimming and cross country are like our tradition. And now we've got all these like academic teams that I don't remember being around when I was uh, their age, but like our science Olympiad team did great, but also like, you know, the neighboring schools like Adams did great uh, over the weekend. And yes. uh, it's just, it's super cool to just be on Twitter and see what's going on in the neighborhood. Uh, like I said, not just Riley, but in the neighboring schools too. And that's it. And that's the thing is just constantly promoting like what South Bend has to offer. And, and, you know, you, you, you see so many families, want to go their parochial way. And I'm not saying anything is wrong with St. Joe and Marion, but I'm saying these South Bend products, you got these kids, these, like you and I are both South Bend products. Like we elementary and middle school and high school. And now here we are giving back to the community and serving the community. And we went to college and like, come on, man. Like, I love it. I love it. So that's why I'm a proud principal because um, I went through some of the same struggles and here we are today loving are you loving are you i'm sure being the principal at a pretty big high school you come across online bullying mm -hmm. uh with some students what are some ways that you help solve their problems or help them out well i just try to talk to them especially if i have some of the students because you don't want to ever embarrass a student so if i see some of them on twitter i try to message them in their inbox to say hey let's think about this so for example there was this what is it called uh Something that college kids have just recently started. Oh, the barstool sports. Oh, the barstool sports. I was so nervous when I saw that come across the screen. And I was like, oh my goodness. So I reached out to him and said, hey guys, whoever is controlling this site, like we need to be mindful of some things that may happen. Like I want you guys to be careful with this. Um, and then some things did come out. And so then I responded back to it and said, this was my fear was because, and so one of the kids handled it extremely well. He spoke, it was just so professional. He said, Hey, Riley high school does not want to be a part of this. And so we're going to step down from it. And so, but we're always constantly talking about it. One thing that I also talk to our students about is resumes and scholarships and like people are looking at social media to determine if they want to hire someone, give someone a scholarship. I mean, and that that can that can crucify you. That can jeopardize you getting a scholarship if you're not handling your social media account in a professional manner. So that's how we we deal with it. We just try to stay on top of it and address the kids and speak to them and, and have have good conversations about what they put on social media. Uh, one thing that you tell all our students in the student section is be positively annoying. Yes. <laughs> I love that. And now you, uh, you're branching out a little bit from Twitter to Instagram. Yeah. How's that going? It's going good. Instagram is a little tricky though. Like you can't, you can't put all the, the gifts and all the stuff that you want to add in there. I think you got to download it to your phone. So I'm still trying to learn it. Um, my niece, <laughs> she goes to Northwood. She was sitting down trying to, uh, give me a, a professional development on it. So there's some things that I learned, like I learned how to hold it up and put fire to it. So. <laughs> Um, but I, I still want to learn that because that's another huge connection that our kids are on. As soon as I jumped on, I noticed like end up getting like 400 followers. And I think like 300 of them are our students. And I'm like, wow, or their parents. And I'm like, OK, this is another way for us to promote what's going on in our building. So it's all about promoting Riley High School. Just letting people know what's going on great at Riley High School. Yeah, and I will say, like, we have a we have multiple teachers running the Riley Twitter account. Mm -hmm. And I think not only that helps like kind of keep everything balanced, and you know, we also are dad, so it kind of keeps us with the family when we don't want to be on Twitter and things like that, but then people are still messaging. But you're right about having not only our students, but parents, and then on our Twitter, there is tons of kids from other schools that are following us, whether it's sports related or just friends related, I think that's a great quality too. 
Yeah, and I, and I think because I follow all the our sister schools as well, I just think it's really important that we're just keeping on top of each other and and helping each other grow and like retweeting and liking everything that our sister schools do and and putting that hashtag Team South Bend in there so everyone knows that it's not just I mean it's just not just a a one school thing it is a community it's a corporation yeah and I think now more than ever with uh, social media being on and and teachers learning from teachers and kids learning from kids all over the the state and the country. Uh, social media is very powerful. And the only reason, and I tell this to our students, the only reason like we should be like uh, competing against each other is just when we're on the field or the court or the track that's or it. the rinks, like just during that time period when the whistle blows, that's it. And then go around helping each other. That's it. This has been a great conversation. And thanks so much for uh, for joining me. I'll admit it's been kind of weird because whenever we're hanging out in the hallways, it's like it's always Mr. Henderson, Mr. Ponder. <laughs> I just want to kind of wrap up with a couple things. So what is your definition of success? I think success starts within within here for you. I feel successful that I am a principal of a school, that I have a family, that I have friends, that I have people in the community. I do feel successful from that. But I also feel like there's so much more. Like there's so much more that you want. Like George McCullough was the greatest principal that I had. You know, and and I look at that wall and see that he was a blue ribbon school. Like I desire that. I want that. I want to have an A school. You know, and so, but it takes us as a community to do it within our own building. And and I think we got the tools to do that. But I think success it starts in your mind. And and what do you see as success? And so I see success as being able to wake up every morning, report to a building that is beautiful. And if I failed that day, I have the opportunity to go back the next day and do it. And so that's, I guess that's what, you know, it's like that Michael Jordan saying, you know, I took this many shots and missed and, you know, I failed, I failed, I failed, I failed over and over again just to succeed. And there's going to be moments, man, that I'm just going to continue to feel like I'm failing. Like if I have a student that's not doing what um, I feel like they could be working to their potential then I feel like I failed, but then I get the opportunity the next day to, to work with them again. And so I think that's what it is, Mr. Ponder, man. It's just starting over every day and having that opportunity every day. Love it. Yeah, my friend and one of my uh, mentors, Dan Droder at mm -hmm. John Glenn, great teacher, great coach down there for many years, said like teaching is like a baseball season. Mm -hmm. It's just it's so long and hopefully you have more wins than losses. And uh, that'll be a successful year and a successful season. Now we've been talking about social media. Where can people find you? What's your, what are your handles? My Twitter account is at S Henderson five, seven, four. And then my Instagram account is, is it an at before that? Uh, I think so. I don't know. I don't know. We'll just put the links below, but it's principal Henderson. All right. That's great. So we'll put some links below so people can follow them. And I want to thank you, Mr. Sean Henderson my friend, for being on here with me. Absolutely. And I want to thank you for being on it and everyone to please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thank you.